everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Facebook Live. This is our third one this semester. Yeah. And boy, do we have something well, exciting for you. For you. <laughs> <laughs> like, it actually is kind of, I mean, like, okay, so we're laughing and joking and talking about how it's kind of not exciting and kind of nerdy, but I mean, it is kind of cool. It is kind of interesting. I mean, if you want to nerd out about it, I mean, I, I think it's kind of cool. And the most important thing is you need to know it. <laughs> yeah. So it's nerdy, but it's also like, necessary we'll probably tell you more than you actually need to know but then think about like how the like uh jeopardy and dinner parties you'll right. be the kid who knows which would be very cool more than yeah more than most people know so and we should probably tell you what we're talking about so today we're talking about library of congress classification oh my gosh <laughs> such a sexy topic <laughs> we're just gonna call it LCC. LLC. or LLC, whatever or <laughs> lc or whatever um but I think sometimes um, we as librarians, like, will assume incorrectly um, that students know what we're talking about when we talk about, like, we'll say, like, LC classification. Right. Or um, we kind of assume that you guys know some things about how the library is organized that probably you, you don't, don't know. know. Especially um, if you've never been in an academic library before. And then we think about it and we're like, oh, yeah, we know because, wait, where is our, um, where is our textbook? We know because... Okay, so funny story. We're just going to deviate for a second. Stephanie and I were preparing for this. Oh, wait, this one's yours. This yeah, one's we fun. swapped them. Um, preparing for this, like looking back at our stuff, and we both broke out our textbooks from library school. <laughs> Organi organization of information. And we went to two different library schools. So mm -hmm. thrilling. Thrilling. Years apart, too. Well, years yeah. apart, but you can see it's dog-eared. Like, so we take it seriously. Yes. Um, but we just thought this was funny that we both, like, had this in our office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, I you know brought mine out to be a prop. Beth came running out with her. I was like, I have that. And then not even as like, a, we're not, neither one of us are catalogers. So no. I think that's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, uh, but we had to refresh. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, maybe we should back up and introduce ourselves. Oh yeah. We forget to do that all the time. I just assume we have like a regular viewership. We do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. But we also are always having new viewers, right? <laughs> Welcome new viewers. Welcome new viewers. We'll put our nerds away and <laughs> we'll say, um, why don't you go first this time? Oh, I always go first. That's right. Alphabetically, I should probably be first anyway. Um, oh, it's okay. Whatever. We're not we're not cataloging ourselves. Oh God, thank God. <laughs> okay, we will right. break out the cutter chart in a little bit, and we'll be like, "This is where this we is would be." We... <laughs> anyway, okay. All right, so I'm Stephanie Eversard. I am the social sciences librarian at the Marks Library at the University of South Alabama. Yeah, and I'm Beth Rudin Shepherd. I am the Arts and Humanities Librarian, so we are sort of each other's counterparts in that way um yeah and I work in the same place she does so <laughs> we're in the same building she actually drives like three hours from Birmingham Ooh, no no really yeah no. No. no 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 um just for this video just no. for this just for this I video. actually just literally like 10 feet that way. and we usually show about three seconds before the video starts so <laughs> yeah yeah um okay so now that we've introduced ourselves um let's talk a little bit about maybe um Maybe the philo maybe we should start with that we're different. The I think that's a okay, good place that's a to good start. place to start. So most of you are probably especially if you're younger students, you're probably familiar with your high school library or the public, public library. library. Yeah. And they let's hope so at least. Yes. Oh, without a doubt they are. <laughs> I mean they're watching two librarians <laughs> chat. It's a good chance they probably right. So you're probably familiar with the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah. Which is how those public libraries mm -hmm. and uh, at normally high school libraries, I've seen a couple high school libraries that use library cards, so it's mm -hmm. real weird. Um, that's how those libraries are organized. And so kind of the hallmark, I guess, of the Dewey Decimal System is that it's simply a numeric system, right? right? So it's like, you'll see like 932 point, and then these really long decimal numbers after right. the point, right? Um, which, and they have broader, more general categories. Yeah, like history. Which is why they tend to be used for smaller libraries. Right, like, so, I, God, I don't even know. This is terrible. I mean, because I don't do do, do decimal system, but I think, like, I don't know, it's like 900 is history or whatever. So it's like all of history. Right, right? everything goes in Everything, there. and then I think there's, like, you know, um, I don't know. Yeah. So if you have Broad. a whole lot of books then eventually those categories would become meaningless. Well, what happens is you end up with these huge numbers after the decimal, right? Right. To try to make it organized in any kind of way. So at that point, it becomes sort of unusable, right? Yeah, so you can't find what you're looking for. 
So, so if there's a library that has a whole lot of books, say like everything published, at least in English, where, <laughs> where would they go? So the Library of Congress was like, we need a better way to organize our ish. So let's do Library of Congress classification. Let's, so, yeah. yeah, let's change. Let's change the system, or, and, or rather, develop a new develop system. Develop a new yeah. system, right? Which allows us to be hyper specific in how we classify and organize books, right? Or any kind of library material. So let me show them just how specific. Here's your. So unlike Dewey Decimal, which just has a handful of broad categories. Let's zoom. Let's see if we can zoom in on like in. political science. Here we go. J. Yeah. Wait. J. But even within political science, you're going to have all the other J's, right? Because you've got J-A, which is going to be general. But if you have political theory, it's J-C. And then so on and so forth. Plus the textbook. Um, J-Z is going to be inter... Oh, yeah, I know. I'm international relations. Um, <laughs> this is my one of my fields. Um, and so we have all these J's, which are broken down into letter categories J, J-A, and so forth. So you're able to be much more specific. Yeah, let's take a look. Um, so we talked about that, but we were talking jokingly about history, right? Um, so we have actually two, because history is such a broad subject, in history we have two Library of Congress like general headings. We have D and E, and D is going to be the history of Europe, Asia, and Africa, and then we break it down further into the history of the Americas, right? And within the history of the Americas, we have E, which is the United States history, um, and then um, the general category, and then F is going to be local history, and then Canada and Latin America. So Mexican histories, Cuban histories, things like that would be in the Fs as opposed to E's, right? So it allows us to get really, really specific. And it's also really good for people doing research. Yeah. Because when you go to find something, everything in Ooh, that wait, area. Wait, wait. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay, well, we'll talk about that. Yes, everything in the area is together, right? But, um, <laughs> we're getting so excited about it, we forget, right? <laughs> Maybe it's cooler than we thought. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> okay, um, but so big difference, I should tell for students first things first, the big mm -hmm. difference between Dewey and LC is that it's an alphanumeric system. Mm -hmm. So call numbers start with letters as opposed to numbers. So do we have an example in here? Yes, we do. From some of these old We books. have a reference. Yeah. Did you want something from reference? Yeah, let's okay. just grab. Okay, so you'll see on the call, oh my god, I can't tell where the thing is. Oh, I don't even move know if that's going to. Oh, is it going to show up? I don't know if it's going to show up. I don't think we can. Anyway, you'll see on a call number. I do have some printed. Okay. Oh, good. Look at her. Um, the letter will, the call number will start with um, a letter. So in this case, it's Z because it's a library related item. Um, but so uh, my, one of my big areas is um, American Lit and it's PS, right? Oh, look at her with her printed. Oh, PR. That's going to be like um, English literature. Yep. Good for you. All right. So there is our number. So now we can explain how it works. Okay. So you ready? Should we break it down? Let's break it down. Ooh, okay, so this is why we had to go back and look at our um, to, homework. <laughs> we had to refresh. Okay, so first off, you're going to have your two. It keeps going. Oh, I'm now walking. It's okay. I'll just be a disembodied voice. No, that's okay. I'll be. You explain. I'll hold. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, first, uh, call number starts with the two letters, right? So, in this case, we know it's. Um, and I'll kind of break down how the letters work, right? So, P's are going to be all the literatures. And then we know that the PR's are going to be like English literatures, right? Um, and then the number comes next, which is further subdividing the category, right? So in this case, oh my god, I don't even know what this is. What would this be? This is um, is 600, so it's 6,000, so it's going to be, oh god, I don't even know. Oh, wait, can I even read it? I can't read. We have a cataloger watching. Um, Sorry, guys. Uh, Wendy, you want to it, it, just, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. But the important thing is, is that it further um, indicates subject area, right? Because right? these are already they're still pretty broad. Yeah, they're still pretty broad at this point, right? Because I mean, we have to organize. So let's just say this. Let's, this is this is not the case. But let's just say, for example, this is a book about Shakespeare, right? So all of the other books about Shakespeare are going to have the same beginning call number. So it's going to look like PR six thousand thirty nine. The next number, I don't let Stephanie talk about this. Okay, one. the next Fun. number has a special name, and it is called the Cutter number. Yeah. Um, and the Cutter number, okay, I could go into the history of the Cutter number. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> well, well, long story short, the Cutter number was invented so that you could add to a library infinitesimally. Ooh. So you could keep, by using Cutter numbers, you can add stuff into the collection without having to like re-alphabetize or redo all your yes. numbers. Yes. It's so, it's so incredibly cool. So it's Wait, actually it's really actually cool. way cool. Yeah. So it means that you're, you're 
collection get huge. Right. And so the first coder number is generally, oh my God, I'm so bad at this. The first coder number is generally about from the author's last name, right? Yeah. And the second coder number, which is this other number you see here, uh, is subject area. Right. Right? Okay. Back to cataloging <laughs> class, right? And then, of course, this number is just publication date. And then, yeah, that's just when it was published. Okay. So now that we broke down what it is, how do you re how do you find something like this? Like, how does it work, Stephanie? Well, the good news is, as a student using the catalog, you don't have to know all that stuff. No, we just nerd it out for a <laughs> second. Oh, yeah. But it is kind of helpful if you think about it like that. It, do, it yeah. is helpful. And there are librarians who do have to know it and have to know it very well. Thank God it's not me, <laughs> obviously, because I was like, eh. and those, and those are our catalogers. They're uh, in the basement. So <laughs> Not really a basement. Um, it's not really the basement. I think they feel like it's the basement. Yeah, but, yeah. but um, you don't ever see, if you guys come to the library, you don't ever see them um, because they are in the background, like working to make sure that all of the stuff that we um, get as a library gets organized and gets on the shelf. They, so, help us, they help us find what we need. They have a crazy important job Yeah. because um, like without them, things wouldn't get organized. And then when students come and ask Stephanie and I questions about how to help them find research and stuff like that, we wouldn't know where to we find wouldn't it. know how to find it, right? Yeah. They help us do that. Um, so how, how do I find this on the shelf, Stephanie? Okay. So when you look up a book in South Cat, which we talked about last semester, Go back um, and watch the video. Go back and watch it. You're going to see the call number. And the first part of the call number you want to pay attention to are those two letters that we were talking about. And that's going to tell you, um, well, it's going to tell you what it is, first of all. But it's yeah. also going to tell you where to actually to find it in the library. Yes. And our library has a little map. I didn't bring the map. I didn't either. But it's okay. We probably know it, though, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. A, a for HB. HB, yeah. It's going to be third floor north. Mm -hmm. And there is a study area between the shelves, by the way. Is there? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at her. <laughs> I was up there. I was up there yesterday. Um, but yeah, they're on the third floor, and then everything else um, is on the <laughs> right? Through <No>? Z <laughs> is up there somewhere. Fourth floor, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but we do break them apart um, because uh, it's just easier for you to find them that way. Um, so make sure, like Stephanie said, make sure when you're looking for a book that you pay attention to the first two letters first so you know what floor to go to to yes. find them. and pay attention to the first two letters, not just the first letter, because if you're just Like looking, the H, H's, for example. Yeah, so if you, cause, because if you find yourself in there and you're just looking for H... It's two, it's two totally different floors. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, two different floors, and even, even within the yeah. same floor, you're going to end up walking... Yeah, so what you'll do, right, is just take a look at the end of the ranges, mm -hmm. right? We'll have the call numbers posted there, like, on the ranges, so it will the tell you. The ranges being the bookshelves. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right, so, sorry. So the end of the Librarian the, speak. Like, the end cap of the bookshelf. <laughs> Retail speak. Retail speak. <laughs> okay. Think of our audience here, right? Okay. All right, so, like, uh, yeah, the end cap. They'll have the, the letters on there. So you look for the letters. Once you find the letters... Often, depending on the size of the collection, um, they'll be then they'll start to specify numbers on the yeah, which will too. be the next thing you're looking for. Right. So you first go alphabetically, then you switch to numerically. And it's very important again to look at that whole number because I can't tell you how many times I've had students who will be looking for sixty. Oh right, because it's actually six thousand thirty nine. Yeah. So if you're looking for sixty, you're never going to find the book you're looking for. So, right. So you look so for you look for six thousand. Everything before the decimal is going to be together. Right, so you find 6,000, and then you just keep moving down until you find, like, 6,021, 6,027, 6,035, and then hopefully you get to 6,039. Then you start looking at the stuff after the decimal. Because there's going to be multiple books with the same first four or five or three, whatever, numbers mm -hmm. with that call number, right? So you'll see, like, you'll be like, oh, well, there's lots of books with this. Yes, this is where the cutter number comes in. Right. Okay, so cutter number goes back, get excited, alphabetical. So yes. you've gone alphabetical, numeric, now you're back to alphabetical. Yes. So then <laughs> you find, in this case, what is this, an O? It is. It looks like an O, yeah. Okay, so you're going to find, look for A, look for B, look for C, you get to O, right? You know your, mm -hmm. your alphabet song, which I still have to sing in my head when I'm in the sax. So sing your song. Um, you get to O's, and then logically by this point. You're back to numbers. Back to numbers. And by this point, because of the specificity of the cutter number, it should be right in front it of you. should be looking at it, mm. right? Um, and if there's multiple books by the same author, you'll see the same. You'll see the same cutter first part, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, what else do you want to say about finding books? 
with the library of congress classification i mean like the actual like breakdown of the numbers it sounds way trickier than it actually it's not, is. It's not hard at all. Um, once you, like, do it once, you got it forever. And the library is very nicely labeled, so yes. you can, it's very easy to find. Yes. And I, 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 the reason I'm underscoring this is because I, Saturday, had somebody who ah. was wandering, he was ah. wandering around, um, and he was looking for a, a totally wrong number. Like, he was just looking for the first two parts of the number. Oh, that happens all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's the whole it's the call whole number. number. And it might seem extremely long, like you're looking for, you know, 3,023 or something, but... Really right, it's important, right? Because I think um, every call number, or every book has a, it's a unique call number, if that's that edition or whatever, right? So right. it's like a, it's like a barcode for a book. So you need the full thing, right? Right. It's not just you can't half of it. It's like your phone number. And that, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> it's if, like an area if you, code. If you're looking for it, make sure that you you, know, you write it down correctly or you print it out. Um, yes. Don't just try to remember it. This is oh my god, no, no, I don't even do that. I mean, who does that? I don't know. As people do though, students people do. do. Students say, I, I'm gonna... looking for a PR something. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, so the entire sort of like third of the fourth <laughs> right. floor. Have fun with that. So are you? <laughs> So you're looking for Ibsen or Shakespeare <laughs> or yeah, so it's fun. Um, but so, okay. So I cut something up earlier, but I think now's the time to talk about the exciting thing about like using library, like why we use the library of Congress in an academic library mm -hmm. beyond specificity. It's a research help. Like it, right. it helps with research, right? It's organized by, well, it's organized by discipline. It's organized more specifically than that. It's organized yeah, like by, by concepts. ideas. Yeah. yeah. And so you'll find like you'll find books by Shakespeare and books about Shakespeare. Oh, so nice. And everything's right there together. Everything so. in the same place. So you'll find the Tempest sitting next to the a criticism of the Tempest. Right. Right. Which is so nice for research purposes because you're not going to four different places in a library to find stuff. It's all in the same place. And then there's serendipity, right? Another library, the library school term. Oh, I um, know. Serendipitous serendip browsing. Yeah. It sounds romantic. It's not. But it, it, it's well, not. it's kind of, I don't know. It is kind of romantic from feel... a research perspective. I think it is a romantic moment when you find a book on the shelf that you're like, like. Love at first sight. I know. Okay, well, okay. Chance, right? Wait, hold on, let me adjust my, let me, let, let us adjust our glasses. Okay, so. <laughs> So when we talk about serendipitous browsing, we're talking about like, so you find a book in the catalog, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, okay, this is, this is a good book. I need to find it. So you toddle upstairs to the stacks and you look at it. Don't just look for that one book and then grab it and like run away. Right. Don't just laser focus. Like take look some, around. Yeah. Look around at the other stuff on the shelf next to it. Because like we just talked about, like items are going to be on the shelf together. It's so like, there's a very good chance you're going to find something else that you find useful or interesting to you. Yeah, it's called collocation, mm -hmm. right? So it yeah. sounds like a procedure, but it's keeping <laughs> like items together on the shelf. So like collating pages, right. collocation. Um, so if you ever hear a library, librarian talk about collocation, that's what he or she is talking about, right? And collocation allows for serendipitous browsing. Oh, yeah. A plus. <laughs> a plus. <laughs> Where's my cataloging teacher from library? Like, she's, I'm pretty sure she's retired, but she'd be like, Beth, you made it. Yeah. We'll, we'll Although she hates me. <laughs> I'll make sure to send this to her. Please send, please do. Yeah, she's retired, but she'll love it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so take a look. Because like Stephanie said, there will be, I guarantee you, either a equally as awesome or maybe even potentially better right. item on the shelf next to it because it's so much easier for us to browse like with our eyes than right. it is in a catalog, right? I mean, we talk about in the catalog, you can look at the shelf list by clicking on the call number, but I mean, it's not the same. It doesn't really, it's doesn't not the really same do the same thing. Yeah. Which I think is why a lot of faculty want students to go like touch the books because that's how read we read the books. Yeah. Be the books. Be the, because that's how they discover, right? right? Um, and I mean, I think once you start, so you'll kind of find a home call number range, like mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, you get into like your research topic or say you're in grad school, right? Right. Um, and you'll just kind of go up there and see what's new on the shelf. Right. Sometimes. I mean, I, I used to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so any Library of Congress classification system, what else should we say about it? Well, oh, let's just, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Just no, 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 say no, no, we're no, right no, at no, 20, so. Okay, I was just going to say, um, 
if you if you it's your first time trying to locate a book in our library and academic library in general um and you are struggling can't figure it out whatever or you go upstairs and you think the book should be there but it's okay. not um for sure come down and ask um mm -hmm. some things get misshelved and this is a good chance to say if you pull a book please don't reshelve it yeah don't okay so we just explained this really complicated system to you we went to school to learn how to do it and i still don't shelf books yeah i don't either <laughs> because so, I don't mess it um up. don't try to do it yeah <laughs> just don't they have these awesome things called scatter shelves and they say like please put Books, books to be reshelved here. Yeah. Literally, we, we want to do this for you. Mm -hmm. So just leave them on the scatter shelves or leave them on a table. I know you think you're being nice and cleaning up after Yeah, which yourself. is great. Like your mama would be so proud. But you're actually, you might be causing problems for other students who... Or if, us. Or us, yeah. Because if you even just a little bit, you mess up by just a little bit, which is easy to do. Then Seriously. I mean, imagine it's lost forever. Right. I mean, potentially, there right? There are thousands and thousands Thousands of books. and thousands yeah. of books. Um, I mean, especially, I mean, not so bad if you just accidentally move it like a couple books down, but like you take a book from somewhere else and on put it, you said you don't want it and you stick it on the end of a range. Or you misread the call number and you stick it in the wrong area. And then it's gone. It's gone until somebody stumbles upon it and says like, oh, when we do shelf reading and says like, this isn't in the right place. I actually found the ACLU handbook for civil disobedience that had been marked lost for about 12 years. What? Yeah. See that's, I mean, in, mm -hmm. it probably was totally innocent but so mm -hmm. so we want to do the work for you right so just leave the book don't reshelve it um but yeah sometimes things get put in the wrong place there's a lady downstairs in circulation who is like the um book bloodhound bloodhound yeah yeah vanji if you're watching this this is you um she can <laughs> smell like books i don't know like she can find a lost book faster than i don't i mean i give up and she's like oh there it is she has all these tricks. It's right behind you. Yeah, she's got like amazing. I'm like, yeah. it's green. And she's like, got it. <laughs> um, so come to come tell us. Um, there's a good chance. It could be, actually could be waiting to be reshelved downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of places we can check. Right. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you remembered that. Yeah. I mean, because that is kind of, I mean, I understand that is frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, don't do what I think a lot of students do. They don't find it. They think that. Or they think they goofed. Right. They think and they they're, don't ask. Right. So, I mean, you may have goofed, and that's okay, too. And even if you did, who cares? <laughs> who cares? I, do it too, I do it all the time, too, where I think I'm looking for one thing, and I double But then check. I look back at the call number, and I'm like, no. <laughs> that's why, that's why <laughs> that's it's not why there. That's why I can't find yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else? A, a library of Cosgrove. Do we have any questions? I don't think we have any uh, questions. no questions. Man, I really was hoping we would have a question, but um, I'm just trying to think. What if someone th asked us, you know, like, to build a cutter number? Maybe it's good we don't get any questions. Well, in library school, in my cataloging class, we had to try to catalog ourselves. Like, a, like you took, you, it was terrible. I like, it, it, it had to, yeah, it was very bad. Like. Your own self? Yeah, so things about you and like how you would classify yourself and you had, it was very weird. It was that terrible. That is very strange. It was a terrible assignment. We just had to do millions. So maybe don't send this to and my cataloging millions, instructor. And millions of practice. Oh, God. Yeah. No. Mm. <clears throat> I did bring a cutter table to show them. Should I show them? Yeah, show them a cutter table. This is exciting. Mm, no, it's not. But Don't you guys want to become librarians so you can do this? I know we're, like, bashing cataloging. Catalogers downstairs are like, um, it's my job. I'm and it's actually, pretty awesome. I don't think we're bashing. I think it's, like, <laughs> in praise of catalogers because this is this stuff is hard. It's hard, and man. And tedious. And you can't, I mean, you got to be good you at it. you got to have a detailed mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm not, well, I don't think we're bashing. No, them. we're saying, like. Thank God it's somebody else. Thank goodness we have you. Yeah. <laughs> Catalogers, if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, so um, that's Library of Congress classification system briefly and quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we hit the highlights. Like, if only we could have done it that quickly in library school. Oh, God, I know. Like, just like, okay, cool. <laughs> Peace. Um, but maybe, so we talked a little bit about, like, the actual, like, number scheme, but there is more to Library of Congress classification than just numbers. There's, like, subject headings and stuff, too. Right. So maybe that's a forthcoming yeah. episode. That's a different part of Library of Different part of yeah. classification. But um, maybe we could throw yeah, that in there. Yeah, we could talk about the headings. Yeah, because that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. It's pretty, it's pretty important, cool. too. Yeah. yeah, and I think people think they're, like, there for flair. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, they're, they're there. Um, so numbers how to find them what they essentially mean um how we're a little bit different um than dewey 
do you always okay so this is totally random and i know we're running over but like when people find out you're a librarian do people always go like i guess you know the duty decimal system really well no. and you're like no actually I, I don't we use library of congress only so. yeah <laughs> like i always like and i always at this point like i feel like i've been a librarian long enough now where i'm just kind of like <laughs> uh-huh. yeah because i don't want to explain anybody i'm like yeah. yeah we don't use the duty decimal People don't is that better or worse than the assumption that we sit around and read books all day? I, I don't know. But I just feel like I used to go, like, we don't use the library. We don't use Dewey Decimal System. Yeah, I'm totally still doing that, so maybe I just need to. I think you got I think at a certain point, like, six years in, now I'm just kind of like, ha ha, good one. I don't know. So, yeah. Um, library of Congress. So, don't ask a librarian that if you're going to take if you're gonna take anything. You should away. ask her if, you, if she knows the Dewey Decimal System really well. And she'll be like, ha ha, no, Library of Congress. <laughs> we'll be like, great, awesome. Um, okay, guys, so what's next week? All right, next week we're going to uh, recap what you should have learned in your library instruction in English 102. Ooh, okay. So, so if you haven't you- taken English 102 yet, you get like a, a um, preview. Yeah, spoiler alert. Um, or if you did take it but you were sleeping through the library instruction. Not with me. Oh, not with me. Seriously. Good luck. <laughs> For one, I walk around the whole time. I know. I will torment you. Do um, you need help? Your worksheet looks empty. What are you doing? <laughs> so we're going to cover stuff you should know. So that, you doesn't refresh look like, that doesn't look like one search. <laughs> Google. Um, so yeah, so we'll cover that next week. Mm-hmm. And then after that, what are we doing? Uh, we have a few things coming up. We have a day in the life of a librarian. Ooh, that'll be fun. So that will answer the question. What? Do, do you, do, what, do you, do you, do you read books all read day? Books? Not so much. Mm-mm. And a few other exciting things that are what I assume are exciting things on our agenda. I know. We got real jazzed about Library of Congress today, so I don't Unexpectedly, know. Unexpectedly. I, I, I know. I thought we were going to be like, and then, and then all of a sudden we started talking about it, and I was like, this wait is a actually, minute. This yeah. is, I forget how cool this is. Well, we know we chose the correct career. Seriously. <laughs> nerds. All right, guys. Well, two nerds are going to sign off. Oh, before we sign off, we should do social media stuff. Oh, okay. All right. So you're on Facebook right now. At least eight of you are watching. If you have- Eight? I know. Um, <laughs> don't, don't let the fame overwhelm you. <laughs> One day we'll be in double digits, man. One day. Broken uh, dream. But go ahead and uh, like us on Facebook. That way you'll get our Facebook updates and you'll be notified whenever we go live. We also are on Twitter at USA underscore library. And we are on Instagram at marks.library. And if you want to catch up on all our previous Facebook Live episodes, which I know you do, we are on <laughs> YouTube as uh, Mark's Library Live. Yeah, so go there and look at all of our stuff. We love it. Okay, guys. Oh, we love it. We love it. <laughs> Beth loves it. I love it. You'll love it, too. You'll love it, too. <laughs> the best, the best lives. All right, guys. So uh, two nerds are going to sign off for the week. And if you guys have any questions about Library of Congress, don't hesitate to post them in the comments because we still look at the comments like afterward. Mm-hmm. And then you could also just um, post a question to our, oh, my God, to our board. Is that to what it's wall. called? Good God wall. almighty. Whoops. Okay, to our wall. and Just share it on the MySpace with yeah, us. Yeah, on the face space <laughs> with us. Or smoke signal. No, I mean, oh my god, now I feel really old. Now I'm like really embarrassed. <laughs> okay, anyway, now I'm embar- I'm officially embarrassed. Okay, okay. so share it on a post on a wall and we'll answer them as best we can if I can get my keyboard to work. <laughs> okay, guys, well, I'm, yeah, it's time to go. All right, bye, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>